hi hello in today's video i i will be drawing so okay this comes with an explanation first the first explanation i thought of a really cool character idea which is what this started as of a gnome tabaxi hybrid because i and i did some research on it and originally it was just an elf or uh, like a gnome or she was enough but and i thought it was a cool idea and i also thought it'd be a cool idea if it was like big long cat ears but like where the human ears are so there's no weird is it a human but human ears or no human ears because i don't want to answer that question <laughs> and i took some thought about that and i was like oh i really like stars and i started customizing a doll that was like supposed to be like an eldritch star being which is what this character ended up turning into so essentially i went through a lot of it like i said i did i wanted to try to do the double ear thing because i thought it looked cool but then i ended up changing my mind to just the singular ears mostly because i did do some research on what gnome gnome tabaxi hybrids look like but i don't really like the fact that like all the other hybrids for anything humanoid looking has some humanoid features and then the gnome tabaxi hybrid oh they're just short i just i thought that was cheap from my research on it so i changed it so i changed it a little bit to make her more cat and then her outfit it took me a while to decide on the outfit i finally decided on this and then i thought of a backstory for this character and then i really liked it and okay this goes into things because there are because technically it went from being just like a D&D &D character idea, let me grab my notes, to an idea that just completely transformed into something else, which is why I have notes. So it started out as a D&D &D character I wanted to play, similar to my character Calypso, but it ended up turning into a whole thing and then with other characters, like a whole story idea. Actually, well, a video game idea. I bought RPG Maker on stale and I haven't used it yet, really. And I've been really wanting to use it for something, and so I'm just finally gonna sit down and commit and do something, which is what this kind of is. But essentially, the idea before it became a video game idea was that this character, that she is a warlock to a star, to a dying star god, and she can hear the star, star dog star god speaking to her and i wanted her when i designed her i wanted to make her like the essence of light which is why you'll see her outfits are very light pink essence of light i didn't want to make it yellow because i because her hair was yellow like blondie like platinum and i was like if i go too far is her clothes is gonna look the same as her hair so i made it pink and i made her albino again for that essence of light situation also i just think albino pe people and animals and all that are just like so 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 pretty there's something just so ethereal about it i just think it's so beautiful again and it also went with the essence of light thing and then another thing you might notice is this character does not have two of her fingers this was because the doll that she's based off of my ferrets knocked it off of a shelf and bit off the two fingers of it. I don't know where the two fingers are. I just know they didn't eat them. I'm pretty sure they just stashed them somewhere and I'll never find it. Anyway, so obviously the character also needed to have no two fingers, but saying that a ferret bit off your fingers in a serious story would be really ridiculous. And I started to write about it, why she didn't have this through her fingers and then it turned into a whole deal her general backstory is that she was like a servant she was the daughter of two servants for a elf family and basically she when she was born she wasn't supposed to be born star-crossed lovers situation between two tabaxi servant and a gnome servant and she was just for the first, I'd say maybe four years of her life, she was just treated like a general freak by the household, except for her parents. 
and eventually was just picked on and she was forced to work a lot earlier than a lot of the other any other servants children were because they saw her as a freak if any of the children just wanted to like you know how there's like kids who just touch you like not inappropriately or anything but like they'll just touch your hair or something but and if they wanted to do that they just could because she wasn't even she wasn't seen as a person because one she was a hybrid and two she had was albino or is albino whatever and that caused discrimination and at some point when she's around between i haven't figured out ages yet because they're all supposed to be not little kids i would say older kids kind of teenagers because magical girl when i think of magical girl i think of Madoka Magica age range or Sailor Moon age range. I would say from 10 to maybe 14 was around the age she wished on a star and a ancient eldritch star dot god that was dying inside of a star gave her pitied, pitied her and considered this wish like a prayer and because no one's worshipped this him in years he gave he pitied her and like, I would call it a star's kiss on the forehead. That's the star marking, because she wasn't born with that. That was something from the star god. And now she has, like she's a basically just, she's a magic user. She has that staff that comes out of her forehead like Pearl from Steven Universe. And she can hear, she can hear what the, the, the star gods will in her mind. And it can give her warnings for certain things, but most of the time it's just him like begging her to take revenge or try to kill certain gods even and, and stuff like that. But eventually this turned into a video game idea and I didn't want to completely rip the races off of D&D, so she's a half a tabaxi equivalent and half of a gnome equivalent. And same thing with all the other races depicted in this little character lineup, they're equivalents. There's an elf equivalent. Or, and they might just still be called elves because elves are so just general. But there's a mer, or there's a fish folk, water folk version. There's a tiefling variant, or not variant, but like I said, the tiefling equivalent of e of this character. I don't really have a hundred percent of a story yet on these guys. I do know I do want this game to take place and the 18 Victorian before electricity basically before electricity but so modern if that makes sense but before electricity but the star child that you saw in the first painting her name is Astra the mer person right next to him, to, to her his name is Neri there, you'll see a tiefling who, or I'm calling them devils because they're a tiefling equivalent. And I know there's also devils in D&D, but they're more closer to a tiefling equivalent. And I wanted them to be more related to flame and stuff. Their name is Fima. They, all of these characters, once I realized I was going with a theme, all of them are based off of things that are long very old or long gone. Neri is based off of an extinct type of shark. Ancient extinct shark, like the ones with the weird mouths. Fima is based off of ancient plants and ancient mushrooms and stuff. And I'm not sure on the name because I had, if you can see, when you see the references pop up, I actually had two of my friends design two of these guys, which... I don't know if the other one has any in social media. The one who does, I'll link it. But for for some Anha, which is I'm pretty sure the name. That's what I have my names in the notes. That's what's on there. She's she is a she is a like a void servant. So like a like in the void, like I said, it goes with the theme because it's basically the essence of darkness and darkness has been around for just about as long as light has, or actually far longer than light. 
I wanted these guys to mirror each other because one is the essence of light and the other is the elegant essence of darkness in a sense. I realized skin color was not on purpose. I just thought it'd be cool if they mirrored each other. Anyway, for each characteristics, so they're a voidling. They have, so for Anha, she has these, she has like voidling tentacles that she doesn't really quite know how to use just yet. But throughout the game, you probably would, as you level up, would gain more attacks with them. And she has magic, she's a magic, with magic abilities. I do have all of their mechanics written down, but I'll start with, since I, since I went on that tangent. The, my notes currently is that in darkness, her power grows a little bit, but not just normal darkness. It has to be like pitch black, like your screen, like you can barely see anything while you're playing it for her to have that power increase because any amount of light would ruin the darkness. And for the opposite, Astra, she doesn't, she lose, completely loses her power in darkness because the stars cannot watch her, which means they cannot grant her the power. Does that, that, that make sense? If you're going to, if you're gonna go into a cave, the idea was like you have to choose whether you want to buff up one character at the expense of one, another, or do you want to basically leave it the same. I thought it would be a cool decision for somebody to make because I made game notes too, sorry. This is all on paper. If you hear me flipping through notes. Another thing, I wanted this, I wanted, my idea was for this game to be punishing. I added in some punishing mechanics I'm not going to say, but I wanted there to be decisions like that, if that makes any amount of sense. I don't have really an idea on any story yet. That's probably what I'm going to get to next after I'm done fleshing out how I want everything to work with each other. But this was mostly just for the characters, which these character designs are subject to change because this is like an idea that's barely been born, so it's probably gonna change. But yeah, um, for for my the next for who's who would be next? FEMA, FEMA, FEMA. Okay, I have not played Fear and Hunger. I watched one of my friends play Fear and Hunger, and if you get your eyes attacked and you go blind, you're just fucked. But I thought it'd be really cool if there was a blind character where you weren't just fucked. So she see, or they see, but they see differently. Basically what they do is echolocation with plants and plant roots to see. And so it's like a radar situation. Or this is a radar situation where you can see what the plants see. The look of the game would be completely different. It would be in all, it would all probably be like green in all greens to show the fact that the plants are seeing maybe green and some red to, sh to, to show the fact that the plants are seeing for her or for them. I'm so tired. And, but yeah. And the reason they can see with the plants is because an ancient plant, an ancient plant they stumbled upon gave them the ability to see like this. Um, it's the plants that are popping out of their little jester outfits. Uh, they also have a condition I know it can happen in goats and stuff where the horn in utero or whatever just merges in one big unicorn horn. I thought it would be really cool because I think it just kind of matches the, in my mind their uniqueness because I wanted all of them to be very unique and distinct from each other but also work together. They look like an awkward group of friends. Back to FEMA. That's why they can, that's why they have that ability. They also have plant attacks along with, because they are a devil and all devils get this ability, pyro, a small, a certain amount of pyrokinesis. So she can make flames and do fireball and like all that fun jazz. But it's at the expense of her vision or their vision. I might just, anyway, sorry. It's just because I'm getting, I'm thinking about too many people at once. Um, Their vision because they're burning the plants, which is killing the roots, which that means they can't talk to the plants. Again, another decision-making moment, if you want. In combat, there would be no consequences to using the fire because I think that's just too cruel. But if let's just say out of combat, 
I don't know, in a way, some in some way, shape, or form, you, like, try to, like, light a torch or something happens and you fuck it up and the some, the cap, something happens, I think, like, whatever section of where that fire would be would just be blank or, like, just all black because you wouldn't be able to hear the plants anymore, which is terrifying. This doesn't go for places where there are just no plants because I plant roots can stretch for a really long time. It was just an idea of, of a mechanic in my head to make it punishing but not horrible. But yeah, Astra has basically, like I said, she can hear the stars wherever she goes. She has basic magical abilities, a lot of it revolving around light, just like how Anha has a bunch of some basic magical abilities, mostly revolving around darkness and void being in the void for being raised by the void which I will go over everybody's backstories but this video is already getting really fucking long so that'll probably be a part two where I draw more concept art and for Neri's abilities they can breathe underwater they can speak to animals and most mostly see and they have a mild hydrokinesis because pyrokinesis and hydrokinesis being able to control fire and water essentially can get really overpowered so I didn't want to make them too OP and so it's like a mild version of it so a lot of the magic has to do with creating water and like blasting it at people and stuff or creatures whatever you fight against or just weapons because I didn't want the water powers to get be too powerful that's really all I have for now. Like I said, I don't really have a story yet. All I know is I have this. I want it to be like dark fantasy, magical girls. And I have some mechanic I'm not gonna really say in case I do ever really release this that I, or pun, because I wanted, because I feel like it would be cool to make something that's, cause I don't, the creepy, cute, whole thing that I used to really like a lot. I feel like people used it too much and then it died and I feel in a way it needs to be more creative to come back to, or to do it well you have to be creative about it and that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to be as creative as possible. I'm trying to think but yeah as this continues because I am planning on continuing this and like really genuinely trying We'll see how it goes. The Thank you guys so much for watching and listening to my word vomit about magical people. Yeah, magical people would be the term. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, you should like and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. If you guys want to comment, comment about things like just general suggestions, just ideas, things you think would be cool. I may not take everything, but I do love suggestions because I'm only one brain, and when brains work together, beautiful things happen. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.